Good morning. Welcome to Daily Devotion. I'm Pastor Krieger. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul at all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. Uh, today we uh, look at Psalm 24. Uh, a lot of times we sing this one in uh, in Advent. This one it shows up in in church. Uh, and if you grew up uh, singing singing a lot of hymns in church, maybe you're familiar with one of the many hymns that that sort of paraphrases this. Uh, one of them uh, goes, uh, "Lift up your heads, you mighty gates! Behold, the King of Glory waits. The King of Kings is drawing near. The Savior of the world is here." Life and salvation he will bring, therefore rejoice and gladly sing. To God the Father raise your joyful songs of praise. That's very similar to the wording to the second, second half of the psalm. Um, so maybe you get a sense, um, this idea that uh, of gates, gates opening and welcoming in this king. The, there's a church tradition that says that uh, David wrote this psalm um, on the occasion of the Ark of the Covenant coming to Mount Zion, uh, either for the first time or, or maybe after some, some battle where they carried it out in front of the army. There's no actual evidence for that um, other than it just sort of sounds like it would fit. But I'll tell you, to me it sounds even more like uh, it would fit um, if this were... Uh, if this were not just composed with the Ark of the Covenant in mind, but that the Holy Spirit was thinking beyond that to the advent of the promised Messiah, Jesus Christ, and that's how we use it often in church. And there's a connection here. If you uh, read the first verse of Malachi chapter 3, it says, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to the temple, uh, his temple, the messenger of his of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. So the one who was sent to execute this new covenant is Jesus Christ. The psalm uh, that we that we're gonna read uh, came about six hundred years earlier than that. So let's read for Psalm twenty four and just listen for connections. See why we understand this to be specifically about the coming of Jesus. This is Psalm twenty four. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him. Who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. This is God's word. So if you consider uh, Jesus... During his earthly life, you wouldn't really uh, tend to think of him as the king of glory because while he walked this earth, his glory was hidden. Uh, hidden, that is, except to the eyes of faith. A whole lot of people refuse to accept him and refuse to recognize him uh, as, as having any kind of glory. And even when we think of his triumphal entry into uh, Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, it, the glory and honor given to him that day doesn't really seem to even last that long. But it's a different story now, a different story in eternity. Revelation 5 tells us the song the angels are singing in heaven. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. And he receives all that glory and all that honor because he is our king of glory. And as, his, as king, he fights our battles for us. He defeats our enemies for us, the devil and, and death. And he hands that victory to us. And now he occupies his kingdom and his throne, both in heaven and in the hearts of believers. And in this psalm, we're calling out to the gates uh, that they would be opened up before him. That means that his rule and his reign is welcomed among us. Uh, we want him to rule among us. We want him to rule in our hearts. We want, uh, we want him to make his will our will. 
And because it's because we know that when he exerts his power, it's on our behalf. It's for our good. Now, it's always uh, good to ask when we, when we read a section of Scripture, uh, maybe even especially when we're reading Psalms, uh, what difference does this make to me right now? What does this mean for my life today? Uh, well, we could probably make a really long list, but how about just simply saying that it's not for nothing that we have a king that's, that's ruling over this world and the next. It's not some, some theoretical thing. It's not some, some abstract comfort. You know, uh, I said it in the devotion from last Friday, the fact that God's word came to you and, and was effective in bringing you to faith, it's not an accident. It doesn't just happen. God doesn't just toss his, his word out into the world to see what happens. Uh, God came after you to bring you into his kingdom, into his family. It's no accident then also when he uses his power to, black, uh, to block the attacks of Satan. So as you go through your day, consider how it makes a difference for you that, that you have a king who isn't just ruling over the borders of, of our world. He's personally concerned about you. He's not far off. He's near. He's near in your troubles. He's near in your joys. He's near... Uh, when you drive, he's near when you eat, he's near when you sleep, because as our psalm said, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. That means uh, you, it means uh, your family and friends, it means your loved ones, it also means your enemies. It says, as it says in the psalm, the world and all who live in it. And praise God that that includes us and all things. All these, in, all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's close with prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.